So it may seem odd that I'm actually going to start with slides for this video um, rather than jumping straight to JFLAP, but now that we're moving on to PDAs, things are a little bit more complicated than they were with NFAs and DFAs. So um, I wanted to give you an overview. So in our textbook, Hein um, uses this, uh, this representation for um, PDAs. Um, he says if we're at state A, right, so this is the transition, if we see letter L um, and symbol S is at the top of the stack, then we do operation O, and we have to fill in what our operation is. We either push a particular value, we pop a value, or there's this no op, which means do nothing, don't change anything on the stack. And the initial stack symbol is just the letter X, right? Um, when we come to JFLAP, for starters, the initial stack symbol is a capital Z instead of a capital X, that's okay. And, you know, we have L comma S semicolon O is what we fill in on the transition and filling it in isn't very hard, but the way that it deals with the stack is a little bit different in JFLAP than the way that we've been talking about from the textbook. So in JFLAP, um, essentially what you need to remember is that after every single transition, JFLAP does a pop and you need to tell it what to do. So you have a choice. You can say, um, you can leave in that third position. So let me go back and I'm talking about, you know, so these two are essentially the same as these two LS. It's, it's this O that's different. Maybe I should have called it O prime, okay? Um, in here, if you wanted to pop, you would say pop at the bottom, right? On J flap, however, if you wanna pop, it just happens. You don't say anything. It's just you get a pop no matter what. Um, you can also say do a no op, which from the J flap point of view is pop it and then push it right back on. On the textbook, when we push something on top of the stack, that's equivalent in J flap to saying, well, first push the thing you just popped that I didn't want you to pop and then push this new thing. So um, this may or may not make sense. Let me show you um, what you have to do um, in JFLAP. So here's an example push command in Hein. You see, you see the symbol L, the letter L, um, and the symbol S is at the top of the stack. So you say push this A. To do the same thing in JFLAP, you say the L and the S the same, but what you have to say is AS, in other words, yeah, I saw the S at the top of the stack and you popped it without me wanting to. So I want you to push the S and then push the A. And, and we kind of write it from left to right like this. So, so the thing at the top of the stack is on the far left, okay? If you just want to do a pop, then um, in the textbook, it would look kind of like this, right? LS pop. For us, what we say is LS lambda, right? And this is the J flap, lowercase lambda, which means don't do anything, but that means don't do anything after you've already popped the S off the top of the stack, okay? And if you wanna actually do what we consider a no op in the textbook, right? Then you need to push the thing back on the stack, right? So you say, if I see the letter L and S is at the top of the stack, pop the S and then immediately push it back on again. So here's an example of um, a uh, PDA that we did in, in um, the lecture, right? A to the N, B to the N, right? Our classic, this is not a regular language for N greater than or equal to zero. And here is what the, um, the example looked like in Hein. And remember, we always start with an X on the bottom of the stack in the textbook. And now let me show you what it looks like um, as a JFLAP PDA. So let's see how this goes. I've left the, um, the diagram of the PDA from the textbook up here so we can kind of refer to it. And I'm going to say I want to do a new push down automaton. And we always have to say multiple character input. It'll actually give you the choice between multiple character input and single character input, 
we're going to say multiple character input, even though as everything that we do, we're only going to do a single character from our perspective um, because we may need to push what we just got off the stack back on the stack. Um, we need to choose this multiple character input option. So I'm going to say, okay. And let's see, can I squish this down just a little so that you can see what's going on. All right. So let's make our new um, PDA. So of course, I'm going to start by making three states. So we'll get Q0, Q1, and Q2. And just like before, I'm going to make Q0 the initial state by right clicking on it and then saying initial. And I'm just looking at this, it looks like Q2. I'm going to right click and make it the final, right? I chose this uh, attribute editor thing. And now let's just take a look. Let's let's copy these things. So this says if you see an A, um, the letter A, and there's an X on the top of the stack, push Y. Of course, we need to change that to if you see an A and there's a capital Z on the top of the stack, push Y. So I'm going to go to my transition creator. I'm going to click on Q0 because this goes from 0 to 0. So I'll just click. And I want to, if I see an A, and there's a capital, oops, a capital Z. Come on, I can find the capital Z. There we go. And there's a capital Z on the stack. Then I want to push the Y, but I got to tell it to leave the Z there. So I say YZ. And now I'll hit enter. And you can see it says if there's an A and a Z at the top of the stack, then put YZ back on the stack. Because you can think of it as like in order for JFlap to look at the top of the stack, it has to pop it off. Um, but so this line here is the same as this, right? So let's do this other transition down here. If you have an A and you see a Y at the top of the stack, push Y, right? So what we're going to have to do, I'm going to um, come down and click on this again so I can add another one. So if you see the letter A and there is a Y on the top of the stack, then I want to push a Y, but I also want to leave that Y on the top of the stack. So I got to push it back on. So I'm going to say, um, y, y, and I'll hit enter. And of course, JFLAP stacks um, transitions uh, in PDAs the same way it does in um, everything else we use. Okay, so let's do this transition, B, Y, pop. So I'm going to do a transition from 0 to 1. And if I see a B and there is a Y on the top of the stack, then I want to pop. Right. Oh, and I've been tabbing between these options here, right? I can click on them or I can tab between them. Um, uh, in this case, because I want to pop, that means pop the Y off the top of the stack and J flap automatically pops. I'm just going to leave that Lambda in there. So I'm not typing anything and I'll just hit enter. So I have, if I see a B and there's a Y on the top of the stack, from the J flap perspective, it's do nothing, but that's because I always pop the top of the stack. Uh, let's do this BY pop up there. That's going to be the same thing as we just did, right? If you see a B and there's a Y at the top of the stack, then pop, which is just leave a lambda. So I'll hit enter. Let's do the transition from one to two. So this is lambda. If you see an, well, this is lambda and you see an X at the top of the stack, right? And in the Hind textbook, X is our um, empty stack symbol. Um, over here in JFlap, Z is, so we need to change that a little bit. So I'm going to do a transition from Q1 to Q2, where I say I'm going to leave the Lambda alone there. In here, I'm going to say, if you see a capital, oops, a capital Z, apparently I can't touch type capital Z, there we go, capital Z at the top of the stack, then you want to do a no op, but of course that Z got popped off and we want a no op, so I need to push that Z back on again. Does that make sense? So I'm going to hit enter. Oops, and I'm just going to drag that out a little bit so that things are right side up. Maybe I can pull this in a little bit. Okay, so I think we have two transitions on here. Um, and we have that, and we have the loop, and we have that. So all we need, I think, is a transition from 0 to 2. Um, oops, sorry. So let me go back and add another transition. So we have, if you see a lambda, I'll leave that alone. And this says there's an X at the top of the stack. I have to say there's a Z at the top of the stack, except I can't touch type my Z. Where's my Z? Huh. 
Shift Z. Good. Make sure it's a capital Z. Um, then we want to do a no op, which means we need to leave the stack alone, which means that since the Z was popped off, we need to push it back on again. Okay. So here is our JFLAB version of the, um, of the uh, A to the N, B to the N um, PDA. Um, and here's the equivalent thing in the textbook. All right. So now let's just test a few strings and, um, and see what happens. So we can go to the um, step by state and let's just do it for a single string. Why don't we do A, 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 B, B, B. Okay. So I'll say, okay. And you need to choose, do you accept by final state or empty stack? Because remember in the other lecture, I said there's equivalent versions of um, PDAs that accept by, em by empty stack, but we do final state. So I'm going to say final state. Okay. And here's the step-by-step um, the -step diagram. I don't know if you can see this, if I can make this any bigger. Let's get rid of that other one now that we're sort of done with it. Um, and can I view? I don't think I can make my view any bigger. Um, so here's what it's telling me. It's telling me right now I am at state Q0. The string that I have is A, 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 B, B, B. And here's what's on my stack. My stack just has a Z on it. So now I'm going to tell it to take one step. And when I take one step, of course, this is a non-deterministic um, PDA, right? Because we could take that free lambda jump if we want. So after taking one step, it says, huh, you could be in one of two places. You could be still at Q0, process that first letter A, and now on the stack, remember we read the stack, you know, top to bottom is left to right here. We have a Y and a Z on the stack. That's what we expect, right? In, in um, our hind world, we would have Y and an X, but since Z is at the bottom of the empty stack here, we have a Z, okay? So let's take one more step. And we take one more step, and what's going on here is our jump to Q2 has died, right? Because we tried to do, we couldn't, we couldn't move anywhere from there. So this one's turned red, right? But Q0 is still going strong. Why it swapped these two, I'm not sure, but Q0 is still going strong. We've now parsed, we've now gone through two of the A's, right? We're still at Q0 and on the stack we have Y, Y, Z because for each time we see the A, we put it, push a Y, right? Let's do another step. Ah, well, the red one went away because it wasn't doing us any good anyway. So um, now we have processed all three A's and we have Y, Y, Y um, on the stack with the Z empty symbol there. So now we're about to see a B, right? So um, since the symbol we're going to see is a B, we know we can't take that loop, right? Um, we can't do this lambda jump because there's no Z at the top of the stack. So we have to hope that we have a Y on the top of the stack, which we do. So we're going to take this B, Y, and this says lambda. Remember that means don't do anything after you've already popped, right? So, um, so we expect this stack to shrink a little bit when I do the next step and look at that. It did. Now we're at Q1. We have the two B's still to process. Again, it says if I see a B, um, and there's a Y at the top of the stack, I'm about to see a B, there's a Y at the top of the stack, then do nothing except that pop that you were going to do anyway, right? So let's step. And there we go. We're, we're still at Q1. We still have to process that as B. Um, we don't have any choice of where to go from Q1 because there's a Y at the top of the stack and this um, transition would only happen if there's a Z at the top of the stack. So we'll do another step. Okay, we've processed our whole string. There's now a Z here. We're at Q1. And if I look at this, I could take the lambda jump because there's a Z at the top of the stack. And when we're done, we're just going to push that Z. So I'm going to take a step. And now it turned green. It accepted it because our string is complete. We've used up our whole string. And, um, and we have gotten to the, um, the accept state. Okay, let me just close out of this simulation 
and show you that just like with um, DFAs and NFAs, we can also do a multiple run. So we can try a bunch of strings. So I'm going to try, oh, and here, let's see this one I can make a bit bigger. So I'll try just the string A, 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 B, B, B. That's what we just tried. And I will also try the string, let's say two A's and three B's. And I'll try the string um, three A's and two B's. And I'll try the empty string. I think I can just say empty lambda, right? And it gives me a blank line. Um, and let's try um, A, 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 B, 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 C. Let's see what happens. Um, and let's see, give me some others. A, B, B, B. All right, good enough. Um, so let's run the inputs, except by final state again, and we get exactly what we would expect.